Hello once again Slopers, this is Brian Johnson of the StockMentor.com website. And I uh, was looking to do some information, looking to do some uh, another video for the slope. And it, it's been very, uh, I'll say it's, it's been very difficult coming up with material. And that is because there are just so many really brilliant minds that have been contributing to the posts. The blogs have been amazing, they're fun to read, they're incredibly intellectually uh, intriguing to me. I've really uh, uh, been, I've always had a lot of fun reading the Slopes posts. So I sat down, I started drilling about it, I thought about writing and opining on something of great merit, you know, and then I thought, you know what, you just got to be you and do what you do best. And I feel, you know, what I love to do is educate, I love to teach, and I know that among the brilliant minds that visit the Slope, there's also a good majority uh, of people that visit this place uh, and are new and are, are new to trading and they're just amateurs and they're just getting started and so some of the intricacies of the markets uh, are probably a little over their head at times and maybe will be for a little while till they learn a little bit more uh, about the uh, markets and, um, and and what goes on behind the scenes so I'm just gonna keep it as simple as I can for you and stick to technical analysis and what I want to try to do for you today is build a case I'm gonna show you uh, that we are at a very critical junction in the markets right now uh, it's been long in coming. It's been hard to read. Elliott Wave has been very incorrect for the last uh, few weeks, and that's obviously not a bash on anybody. It's just Elliott Waves are extremely hard to read in a corrective wave, and it's been one called top after another that have failed and failed and failed again. So why is this going to be any different? Are we going to fail here, or will we see more? Well, let's try to build a case for both sides so that you guys are aware of what to look for going forward and hopefully learn a little something in the process. Here's the NASDAQ on a daily, and ultimately what we're looking at is the channel we've been following for a while. Now, what do the bulls want to see? When you build any kind of a channel, you always want to see it hit the top, hit the bottom, and then reach the top again. That shows you bull behavior. Here it looked like we might roll over and it didn't happen so it looked like we might get a little bearish here but we were looking for a break down below uh, any one of these areas. Never happened. We bounced back up and hit the top of the channel again. Very bullish behavior. Here's a retest of the bottom. Now of course the bulls are looking for a test of the top. Following this trend line here, the dotted one that I have drawn in here, you can see we never made it back up and over this to retest the top of this level again. Uh, we held on to this, it eventually rolled over, and now look what we've done. We have broke this bottom channel. We have broke and closed below the 50-day for one day. Now, we didn't get confirmation on the following day. It has moved back up, but it's retesting the bottom side of this trend line. Very typical. You'll see a lot of this as we push forward. So remember this. Now, we have on a daily broken the 50-day moving average, come back up. Looks like we're going to try to retest. So let's skip ahead and take a look at an SPX daily. And you can see here, a lot of rigmarole. Here's, here's the March lows, 666. And you can see us move up into this channel, fall out of it, move up, start to build another channel, which we've been following for a while. Now, what was I really interested in? I'll tell you what really struck my fancy was when I saw this. Trend line from 666 to the 869 and on up to follow this purple line. You'll see that as we build this channel, it's doing everything the bulls want. Hits the top, hits the bottom, hits the top, hits the bottom, hits the top, hits the bottom. But now it has broken out of this major trend line that's started us back in March when this huge rally began. So what is typical? I'll tell you what's normal, and that is to break the trend line and then come back up and retest it from underneath, typically referred to as the kiss of death. And as you can see, that's exactly what we see here. We see a breakdown, a move back up to the upside. We do test the top of this channel again. The bulls are loving this. And for one day, it pops out. And let me just zoom in so you guys can see this from a, a much uh, bigger standpoint, because this is kind of small. One day, we got it to break up and over this upper channel and this purple trend line, which we know goes all the way back to March. It was not able to hold it. It touched one, two, three more times, and eventually broke to the downside. Now what have we done? We broke the bottom side of the channel, we've broken through the 50 day, and through this previous uh, resistance or support here. So now we've come back up, we're retesting the 20 day. This is showing a little bit more strength than the NASDAQ. You'll remember that the NASDAQ was testing the bottom side of this uh, channel line, whereas the S&P has come all the way back up to almost retest the 20 day already. A big move up today. Okay, so now we're going to watch this going forward, but ultimately, 
bearish behavior. All right. So where's the argument for the bulls? What are we looking at here? Well, let's look at one more thing. If we break this down and move it back three months and take a look at the SPX on a 60 minute, we still have a lower trend line here that has not been broken. There's a reason these trend lines are drawn in when it comes to technical analysis, why they work. And you can see here we bounced right off of this lower trend line. Now we are right back up into strong, uh, strong resistance on a very big move. So we have this overhead resistance in confluence with this overhead resistance. So a, uh, a move down tomorrow would not surprise me in the least bit, but it's the size of the move down tomorrow that will make all the difference. And that's if you're bearish, you're looking for it to eventually break this 1040 mark. Why? Because it gets you out of this last line in the sand. This is the last line in the sand for the bulls. If the bears can break this line, pull it down below 1040, and ultimately I'd like to see it get between 1000 and 1020 before we see a, a more major move to the upside, uh, or I would say a, it'll be a pullback. It's a wave two if you're an Elliotitian, I suppose. But if we could see a little bit more, a break of this 1040 area, and a, a more major move down into this area, then we have all the reason in the world to get more bearish. But just because of the action we've had the last few days, we have not broken the last line in the sand regardless of what the daily showing us with closes below the 50 day moving average yes it's bearish behavior but it's not done yet for the bulls they're still holding on uh, to this to this last line right here what's the other caveat in this well we've talked about the Nasdaq and the SPX but has anybody looked at the uh, at the Dow well let me show you this first if we look at a 60 minute of the SPX you can see that as we've been moving down here we had a channel forming Touched the had the top, had the bottom, touched the top, touched the bottom, bounced along the bottom, eventually broke through the bottom. Very bearish behavior. And now we've moved back up. We're into the channel again and back up to that overhead resistance. Well, let's, let's look at a Dow. And you can see the Dow on a 60 minute has never broken this channel. This entire move down, the Dow has held on. Not only that, but it created a falling wedge formation, which is a bullish formation, and that's precisely what we saw today. Now, the Dow has not only uh, kept within this channel, which ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, is just a giant bull flag, but it is also broken up over top of the channel. It is holding the top of this channel, and it's holding above the 50-period moving average on a 60-minute time scale. So this is showing actually very good strength. Unless the bulls or the bears can pull it, drag it way back down into this area again, this is actually very bullish behavior from the Dow standpoint. Now we can opine about, you know, well, the banks make up most of the S&P 500. They've really been the major movies, blah, 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 on and on. But you know what? Just looking at it from a uh, just a, a technical analysis, here's the chart in front of me. What do I see? Look, this is what I see. It's a bull flag with a break and a hold above it so far. So now the bears have some work to do if they're going to make it anything uh, other than a bullish looking outlook. If we take a look at the daily, you'll also see the difference here. Whereas in the channel to the upside, it never really quite broke this lower line. Got to remember we draw these in crayon. We don't draw them with a fine point pencil. And as it kind of closed here and moved right back up it is back in this channel and it is above the 20 day moving average and it looks like if anything is going to make a shot at hitting the upper side of this channel line again and making things bullish it'll be the Dow. So as you can see while the S&P and the Nasdaq are certainly showing us more bearish behavior the Dow is not. The, bear, the bullish case is not off the table yet. So going forward make sure you continue to watch pay attention to the charts all of the charts because the charts will tell you which way to go. Keep your own bias out of it. Don't get bearish, don't get bullish. Just let the charts tell you which way to be. That's ultimately the safest direction you can take. Once you start letting your own bias enter the markets, that's when you get destroyed. That's when you'll blow up your account. And protect your capital. Always set stops, be very careful there. Capital preservation is the number one trading rule because ultimately nobody cares more about your money than you do. So thanks again for letting me join you. And we will talk to you again soon.